You know, there's been a lot of people out there lately that have been saying that certain gun channels are trying to divide the gun community and tear us down. Well, I hate to break it to you, that's garbage. The gun community is not divided. At least not any more so than we've always been. Uh, we're always a little divided. I mean, we all believe different things. We support the Second Amendment to varying degrees. Some people are totally okay with background checks, even universal background checks. Some people believe that background checks are a total infringement of their rights. Uh, people like myself, I don't believe in the 4473 or background checks because I find it to be ineffective. It doesn't stop any crime. So why surrender a freedom for something that does no good? I'm someone that's open to logical compromise. And to be logical, it has to have a positive effect. It just can't quell people's fears or uh, uh, you know, smooth over emotional uh, rough spots. It actually has to be factually based. And there's really no gun control that is factually based, so I don't support any of it. Now, are we divided on that? Well, yeah, we are, and we will always be. I accept the fact that probably three quarters of my viewers don't believe the same things I believe, and they shouldn't. I always tell people, I'm not here to be your messiah for gun rights. I'm not here to be your leader or anything like that. I state my opinion. I don't run my channel in a way to be uh, a business or to be a leadership role in the gun community. It's not what I do with my channel. Uh, I think anyone that follows my channel knows I don't run it in a way to make it big because I would have to not say a lot of the things I wanted to say if I wanted it to grow fast. I don't run it in a way to make money because I turn down endorsements, I turn down support ideas, you know, things that would help me make a lot more money. And I don't run it in a way that I'm the guy fighting the fight for you. I try to encourage you to go out and fight for yourself. I just let you know what I think. It's like when I review a gun, people are like, oh, you, all, you don't like a lot of guns. Yeah, because I don't like them. I don't play the game of trying to be like, this gun is probably for you because I don't try to guess what you like. I tell you what I like. And that's why I run my channel in general. I see myself as more of a hobbyist, uh, everyday Joe Second Amendment guy, and an activist. And not all channels are that. Uh, there are different types of channels out there. There are channels that are salesmen, and God bless the salesmen because we need them. It's not like the gun companies can go out, especially the small manufacturers, can go out and buy airtime on, I don't know, the Oprah show. Is that still a thing? It's just not open to them. So we need salesmen on the internet for guns. Uh, I'm pro-gun uh, uh, industry. want the gun industry to grow and grow and grow and be successful. I'd like it to get it to where every adult in this country owns at least one gun. So God bless the salesmen. Uh, also, there's the activists. Those are the people that are just out there trying to speak the truth, their own truth, and that's it. Uh, trying to fight for the Second Amendment, and God bless those people because you don't really make a lot of money being an activist unless you're a shill or a sellout. And then there's the industry people, and these are just a few of the types of channels. There's all kinds of different types of channels, and people can be parts of all different types. But then there's the industry channels. The channels that are a money-making business, and they're tied strongly to the gun community. Well, that's great. I'm okay with that, too. Like I said, I want a strong gun community. The problem comes when any one of these channels try to pretend to be something else, especially when salesmen try to pretend they're not salesmen, or... But that's not even, that's pretty benign. I mean, you can try to be a salesman and try to be like, hey, I'm just an average Joe, because people on commercials don't say, I was paid to say I like this. They say, I like this. And that's what a salesman does. So that's really not so bad. What really comes into problems, what really causes big issues, is when industry channels start trying to pretend to be patriots or activists, when really their main concern is their bottom line. And that is the problem I had with a couple of channels during that live chat the other day, the biggest one being Iraqi veteran, or Iraq veteran 8888. He sits there and says, I'm a no-compromise gun channel. I'm a, I'm a, just a biggest supporter ever of the Second Amendment. And then proceeds during the chat to say things like, eh, it's not a big deal if bump fire stocks have to be uh, regulated. It's not a big deal. The 4473 is not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. He says, I'm no compromise, and then supports the opinion of compromise several times during the chat, and also sits silently while people spew garbage that's anti 
Second Amendment for the average guy. People saying, oh, I don't care how the Second Amendment does, as long as my business is good, as long as I'm selling. One guy actually said that out loud, and that was clearly the opinion of a lot of the businesses on there. And that is the opinion of business. That should be the opinion of business. Because, and let's face it, what's great for the gun industry is not great for us as gun owners. As gun owners, what they often want is detrimental to us because they do their best business, they make their biggest profits, they sell the most guns when our rights are under attack. Gun channels like me, Iraqi veteran, except I keep calling him Iraqi veteran, it's Iraq veteran. Uh, they do better, we do better when there's a fight going on. We get more views, we get more uh, monetary incentive. Well, that was actually more true back when, uh, when uh, YouTube actually paid. Now you don't really get it unless you're tied to the industry. But let's just forget those channels that are tied to the industry still make more money when there's a fight going on and when they can pretend like they're actually the one fighting it for you instead of fighting against you. When really, they're fighting what's best for the industry, which is usually and quite often fighting against you, but they have to sell you on this idea that they're really on your side. They're a no compromise gun channel, uh, biggest supporter of the Second Amendment you've ever seen, and these other people that are pointing out the truth are trying to divide the community. Uh, like we could divide the community over over something like the NRA. There's like 75 million, that's just a good estimate, uh, adult gun owners in this country. Less than 5 million of them are members of the NRA, and it's actually a number quite smaller than that if you actually uh, look at some internal audits. So that's what? 6%, probably even less than that, probably like 5%. So that means like 95% of the people aren't a member of the NRA. And it's no secret that most gun owners don't agree with the NRA. So gun channels pointing out that the NRA is not fighting in our interest isn't dividing the gun community at all. YouTube is such a tiny little portion of the gun community anyway. And what really comes down to is we're not dividing the gun community, we're saying something that's true, and then channels that have a financial interest in pretending that isn't true want to call us dividers, when really they're the profiteers. I mean, my channel is not out there selling you little tin cans full of trinkets at 10 times their value to make a profit. I'm out here saying what I want to say, even though it's going to lose me subs, it's going to lose me support. Any money my channel makes is from Patreon. And that is not from the community, gun community. That is not from the gun industry. That is from the gun community. That's from people who want to pay me to keep stating my opinion. And I put most of that to good use. The far, the vast majority of that money goes to charities of my choices or charities that uh, people in my live chats choose as we raise the money, then we give it away in those chats sometimes. So I'm not tied to the gun industry. I've made a distinct effort to not be tied to the gun industry simply because it does cloud your priorities, let's say. And I didn't want to have my priority clouded. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it is wrong to be tied to the gun industry. We need a strong social network for the gun industry. What we don't need is them to pretend to be activists or pretend to even care when what they really care about is their bottom fucking line. And I had to at least slip one F-bomb in here. Didn't intend to do that, but it happened. So to people like Iraqi Vet 888, Iraq Vet 888, uh, stop deflecting from yourself. Stop pretending to be something you're not. You're not this great activist. You're an industry guy. You make money from the industry. That bullshit, I've never taken a dime from the industry. Bullshit. Bullshit. You want to pull out some tax returns? I'll pull mine out. You pull yours out. We'll see who took money from where uh, and who gave money to where. So unless you're willing to put your mouth, money where your mouth is or your tax forms where your mouth is, I suggest you keep quiet. Uh, and also, if all you can do are these ad hominem attacks against other people that are actually speaking the truth, saying they're dividing the gun community just because they're affecting a business that pays, that lines your pockets with money, that's garbage. Stop being pretending to be something you're not. Uh, if you want to make ad hominem attacks, come make them to our face. Come in a chat and actually defend your positions. Uh, like I said, in that chat the other night when you had a chance to make your positions public, only Mac stood up. Only Mac actually presented a face of no compromise. Only Mac showed any true emotion. You sat there like a little fucking robot, nodding your head as people said some very anti-gun stuff, occasionally said a platitude, let your boy say something incredibly anti-gun, then you acted like, oh my God, we don't say that out loud. Because uh, I can't believe you didn't have that conversation before if you worked together. So, and if you think I'm wrong, prove it. 
Don't throw ad hominem attacks. Oh, and also in that chat, the one thing that really sold me against you there, Eric, uh, is when you pulled that whole bullshit of, I would give my life for a stranger. That's how good a gun guy I am. Ugh, that hypothetical hero garbage is so played out. It's such garbage. And it's not even true. Uh, the vast majority of people who say that are the people who would least likely do it. Now, I'm not saying people wouldn't do something to save someone else. I think most of us, if we saw someone drowning, we'd jump in and try to save them, knowing there's a risk to ourselves. But there's a big difference between taking a risk and sacrificing yourself for someone else. Throwing yourself in front of a bus to move someone else is one thing. Actually stepping in front of someone to take a bullet knowing you're going to be injured is another or being or willingly sacrificing your life so that someone else will be spared is another and doing that for someone you don't know is very rare and very unlikely so quit tooting your own horn and quit patting yourself on the back over a hypothetical situation that you know you'll never face just because you think it makes you look like some kind of a man because it doesn't so if you've got problems with anything i've said i hold chats twice a week you're welcome to come in any one of them. Talk face to face. Uh, I'm sure you can hold a chat and have an enormous audience. I'll come in there. We can talk face to face. But because I'm not willing to make, not wanting to make anything on it, and I know based on your actions, making money is a big part of your business plan. It's not even a part of mine at all. So I'm more than willing to let you have the, the views and the monetary gains from it. But until then, stop pulling this garbage that, oh, we're trying to divide, you're trying to divide the gun community and I'm the biggest gun supporter in the world and I won't belittle myself to it. That's garbage. I'm calling you on your bullshit. And if you want to stand up and prove me wrong, stand up and prove me wrong. Believe me, I love it when I can uh, accuse someone of being something negative and then they can prove that they're positive because I'm like, that's a win for everybody. If they stand up and show that they're positive and that they mean what they say, that's a win for everybody. When someone doesn't stand up and show they mean what they say, that isn't a win for anybody but them. And so far, you're not winning for anybody but you. And like I said, I don't do this to be popular. I don't do this to, be, to make money. I think anyone that's watched my channel knows I don't do that. I'm totally different than your channel. And I don't want to be your channel. And I want your channel to be successful. I want the sales channels to be successful. I want the gun collective to be successful, but I want them to do so honestly. So if you've got anything to say in your comment section, what's like I said, like your little ad hominem attacks against people like myself and others that actually call you on your bullshit, say it to us or let us come in and say it to you. But until then, just shut up and accept that you are what you are. You're a business making money off the Second Amendment. You are not an activist. You are not a supporter of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is convenient to you and your business, but you're more than willing to sacrifice little parts of it to make a profit. So be what you are, but don't try to be something else. And if you want to try to be something else, stand up like a man and prove you are that.